Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to another Laravel Lair tutorial. Today, I wanted to go over this project. This is a 3D printed glowing mace prop. So check this out. It's actually called a Morning Star, but uh, yeah, it, more, more people will probably know it as a mace. So this is a pretty cool cosplay prop. It's uh, the head of the mace is actually an icosahedron. I've been making a lot of icosahedrons lately, and I thought I'd make a mace out of it. So it's kind of cool. It's got some spikes, uses a lot of different materials like uh, steel, Composite PLA that you can polish. Uh, it's using cork fill, wood filament, PLA from the folks at uh, Color Fab, and a couple of different um, sanding techniques. Inside of it is a NeoPixel Jewel, a microcontroller, uh, a tiny little one. It's called the Adafruit Trinket, um, a JST breakout, and a button and a battery. So if you guys are interested in this project, please do check it out. Check out the project video. It's on YouTube, and um, you can download the STLs, and I also have the source file from Fusion, so you can download it in all sorts of formats, um, like IGS, StepSat, Google, SketchUp, etc., etc. But today I wanted to cover um, top three tips, or top three features that helped me build this assembly. So, here it is in Fusion. If you look at my timeline, I have lots of features, lots of, um, yeah, lots of featurettes, right? It's pretty long. So one thing, the top one that I used uh, to help me build this is just using components. So if I use, uh, so if I click on N, or if you go over to this little thing here, you can color switch. You can use the N button here to toggle between uh, colors. Um, these colors are sort of randomly set, but they allow you to sort of distinguish between components. And I did a tutorial on components, which I'll have linked above, uh, to kind of show you guys how to build them. But in this instance, I just want to show you why I use them and how useful they are. So now you can see that the, uh, the timeline is still crazy. It's, it's color coded, but if you activate a single component, let's take a look at the D20 shell. Uh, when you roll over uh, one of these components, you have the ability to activate the component. And when you activate the component, every other component is grayed out and ghosted. So this is really helpful. And if you take a look at my timeline, it is now just a couple of these um, features. So it's very manageable. It's very digestible, really. And if and if, if the ghosting is a little annoying, you could just turn off all the components. Why not? And then you can focus on just uh, this piece. So it's a great way to work with large, large assemblies, right? Projects that have lots of parts in them. So as you're making your project, think about um, when you want to have it be a separate piece. In this project, it was kind of easy to come up with that. So another, so number two is actually called section analysis. So if you go under inspect, you get this thing called section analysis and it lets you create a cutout view. So here's an example. If I want to create one, I use it so much that I actually have it added up here and you can add anything to your toolbar by clicking on this little arrow when you select and you hover over it. So I'll click on that and then you're allowed, you can click on a face or if your object's somewhere else, you can click on a, uh, a construction plane or even an origin, like an origin, like right here. You get these little origin planes. You can click on one of these. And then you have uh, different manipulators here. So you can like go like this, go like that. I think you can even flip it. Maybe you can't flip it. I guess you just rotate it until it flips. Yeah, like that. So it really helps you kind of work within an enclosed object. So for um, for the D20, I really needed to take a look. At, let's see which which ones I have. So here's one. This one worked really well. So in this case, I needed to create um, standoffs, mounting holes, and some cutouts inside of a shell. And this is the way to do it. It's very, very useful, very handy to get in there and to get inside. And you can create as many as you want. I can I created lots of different ones. Um, and if you look at my master assembly, let me turn everything on and then activate the main assembly. You can see one of them cuts through the entire design. So um, section analysis uh, isn't per component. It goes through, it's global, right? So it goes through the whole thing. And you can see this design is like pretty much hollow. Um, the spikes are kind of hollow too. I wish I could show you that. Oh, they're hollow in the sense that I put zero infill. <laughs> so that is number two. Number three, what is number three? I don't remember. Ah, number three is user parameters. Parameters, right? Yeah. All right, so let's see how I use parameters in this 
in this project. Let me turn off the colors because colors are cool to distinguish, but I, I, without the colors, it looks so cool. So let's take a look at parameters. What did I use parameters for? So in this project, I was like, mm, how big should these spikes be? How thick should they be? How much of a taper should they be? I don't know. So I created some user parameters. I actually only created two. So the first one I want to talk about is spike taper. And I also did a tutorial on just creating user parameters. So check that out. I'll have it linked above. So let's say I want to drop this down to five. And you can see the units of measurements are completely different. Um, th this one here, spike height, is actually millimeters. And the spike taper is the degree. So you, you have the flexibility of changing these and setting different unit types. And then uh, the expression for the height, let's say I want to double this, 60. And now we have some mega spikes. Look how spiky they are. So I could add as many as I want. I could have added the fillets. Again, I could have added the diameter for the spike. But because I kind of knew I wanted to stick with the diameter, that's why I didn't add one. But this is really cool. This very, very quick way. If we go into the spikes component, you can see here, um, I actually had to create each spike by hand. You know what I mean? Like it's not by hand, but it's kind of manually drawn on each surface. I would have loved to make one instance of this and then copy them somehow. But because each face or because each triangle is sort of, you know, equilateral to itself, I couldn't find a good way to make copies. So I just kind of did it 18 different times. So if you guys have any ideas on how to create a copy of this, instead of having 18 different, look how cluttered my, my, uh, my timeline is, let me know. I would love a better way, more organized way to create just one spike and then somehow duplicate them um, on these. Because you can do a mirror and you can copy, but they're all, you know what I mean? They're, they're all on a different, unique face. I don't know how to make a, a pattern where it's like, you know, there's no icosahedron pattern now, is there? But hey, I don't know. But this point is just to show you how I can, instead of manually setting a height and a taper for each spike, I can globally change them with this guy here. So I'm going to bring these back down to 30. And it's very, very quick update. So that is cool. And I can change the degree back to where it was. And that is awesome. I really like uh, user parameters. So think about um, that. You know, projects like a, like a mobile case, enclosures, things where, where devices will change and you're not sure, tolerances and things like that, thicknesses for an enclosure I think would help out a lot. So that is a really quick way. This, this, I like this one because, you know, I have 19 different spikes or 18 different spikes. So um, I'm able to quickly uh, modify all of them with just changing a value. So that's number three. And those are the top three um, features that really help put this design together. Again, they're here. Components, number one, section analysis, number three, use of parameters. I've kind of done a tutorial on all of them except section analysis. Uh, I think it's self-explanatory. Self um, so yeah, there you go. Thank you guys so much for checking out this tutorial. I hope this helps you guys out. And if you guys have any tips, go ahead and drop them down. Leave a link below if you have a, a tutorial video. I'd love to check it out. And please consider uh, checking out the project um, if you guys are into that. But that's going to be it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep on catting. Bye, guys.